another title to solidify his legacy? I did <clears throat> not come up with this question. I just want everyone. Well, 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 Molly, let me, let me, let me say this. It's not the title, okay? It's the title along with the finals MVP. And let me tell you, let me tell you why. Yeah, let me cut off Kendrick Perkins right there, because we don't have time to listen to this ignorance or the ignorance of anyone else who believed Steph Curry needed a finals MVP to validate his career as one of the greatest players in NBA history. But to all those people that were wondering what Steph Curry would do in a final series against the best defense in basketball and the same defense that slowed down both Giannis Antetokounmpo and Kevin Durant, well, it's been something like this. Curry steps back, three-pointer, got it! Curry, another long-distance shot. It's good, Steph Curry! Curry gets free, gets some contact, layup, got it, and one! Look at a post-up Tatum. Curry launches a three, it's good! And to all those people that for some reason didn't believe Steph could carry a team, it's not like we've seen it before or anything, through four games, Steph is averaging practically twice as many points as the Warriors' second leading option. Two times more than Klay Thompson at 17 points a game. Not impressive enough? These are Steph Curry's stats through four games, and these are the rest of the Warriors' starters' numbers through the same four games. 80 less shots, and he has scored only 30 less points than the rest of the starting lineup combined. Not only that, He's doing this on all-time great efficiency, and whilst the Warriors have been playing 4 on 5 offense for the majority of these games, it's gotten so bad with Draymond Green's offense that his own mum, his mother doesn't believe what she is seeing, and even with Draymond averaging 4 points on 20% shooting, Steph has led the Warriors to 2 wins and is looking to make that 3 in Game 5. But before then, let's talk about how he's doing it. Here's Steph in the 4th quarter with the Warriors up 1. He gets a screen from Looney, which Smart trips on, and then has the switch on Robert Williams, who he decides to have a little dance with before blowing straight past him and hitting a difficult floater in the face of Marcus Smart. A couple of minutes later, with the Warriors up 3, Steph then hit an even bigger shot. He gives the ball up to Draymond in transition, who actually does a pretty good job of slowing it down and then waiting for the typical Steph cut, which gives him just enough of an opportunity to get the shot off over the outstretched arm of Derek White. And although Draymond has been really, really, really bad this series on offense, he does deserve some credit for a few of the plays he made down the stretch. But that's all the credit we're gonna give him, because let's get back to what Steph has been doing and I just showed you how he closed out the Celtics in the fourth quarter, but how about yet another legendary third quarter performance? And so let me give you guys the craziest stat you will hear from me all video. Steph has scored 52 points in his 45 minutes of third quarter play, and has done so on 32 shots and a plus minus of 50. A 50 point swing with Steph on the floor during third quarters in this series, which is nothing short of historic. And this scoring and impact is so ridiculous that you could combine the points of the second and third leading third quarter scorers and they would still have less points than Curry. And it's because he can do things like this. Jordan Paul sets a pick to get Curry the switch. He then blows past Horford and is met with Williams at the rim and Tatum from the help side, so he kicks it out to GP2. But this play doesn't end how a normal kick out would end, because he keeps running before getting the ball back off GP2, who sets a nice little screen for a Steph sidestep three. This was after 12 minutes straight of play and 11 previous third quarter points, he continued running and made one of the most difficult shots of the game. But not as difficult as this shot he made at the start of the third quarter, where he got an off-ball screen from Wiggins and hit a 20-foot bank shot? A 20-foot bank shot from that angle? For anyone who's played basketball, that is the shot that was probably the most impressive of the game, including some very ridiculous shots like the two back-to-back -back four point plays that he should have got credited for but he just got three points for both of them on these examples just some of the difficulty of his shot making which we have seen before continues to be absolutely ridiculous 
However, as great as Steph has been, and let's not get it twisted, he is absolutely carrying this Warriors team. Even Clay Thompson said it himself. I think I have seen him show that much emotion, and the heart on that man is incredible. Uh, you know, the things he does, uh, we kind of take for granted from time to time, but to go out there and put us on his back, and I mean, we got to help him out on Monday. So we, but um, wow, just a. Uh, just showed why he is uh, shocking. He wasn't a first-team first NBA guy, but whatever. However, there is one other player, or maybe two, Kevon Looney as well, but one other player in particular that deserves a lot of credit. And I don't care if you clicked on this video looking for strictly Steph Curry content, because Andrew Wiggins deserves everyone's respect. Two years ago, people were laughing at the Warriors for trading away D'Angelo Russell for Wiggins. He was considered a bust, a loser, and a bad teammate. He is now the clear second best player on a team that is 2-2 in the NBA Finals and has kept NBA superstar Jason Tatum to 34% shooting from the field. 34%. And it's because of stuff like this, where Tatum has the ball with the clock running down. He initially tries to use his off arm to create separation on Wiggins, and as you can see here, that doesn't work before he is completely blanketed into an air ball three. Or even on this play, where he does use his off arm and creates separation, but it's Wiggins' ability to react quickly and still get a hand in his face and force a difficult shot. And that's why Tatum is struggling so much because he doesn't have a major strength advantage over Wiggins, and he's definitely not quicker, so he's unable to beat him off the dribble or post him up. Not only has his defense been great, but he's averaging nearly 17 points a game on solid efficiency and nearly nine rebounds a game, including a game four performance where he became the first Warriors player since the great Nate Thurmond to have a 17 point, 16 rebounds performance in the finals. In fact, he's one of only four non-bigs to have a 15-point rebound performance in the finals. Those other names, you might ask? Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, and Kawhi Leonard. So for anyone that called this man a fraudulent all-star, yes, you know who you are. You can eat those words right now. And speaking of historic stats, Steph Curry is now equal with Kobe Bryant and only behind Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and Shaquille O'Neal for 30-point games in the finals. And you have to think, with the way he is playing, he's about to pass Kobe, and Shaq might not be far off either. Oh yeah, and he's also alongside LeBron James and MJ as the only player to score 40-plus points in a finals game at 34 and over. So shout out to Tracy McGrady. And if you did make it to the end of the video, a like would be much appreciated. Subscribe to the channel. Have a great day. Bye.